good morning everybody we are here to uh, organize a function on vigilance awareness week as you all know we are celebrating or we are organizing the vigilance awareness week from 30th october 2023 to 5th november 2023 and this particular program is initiated by the government to create awareness among public to eradicate corruption from all sectors of the economy and in all spheres of our social system then let us try to understand the purpose of vigilance week the vigilance week has been uh, organized by the government for some time back it started in 2006 i think and the purpose of vigilance week is to catalyze action to fight corruption we all know that in spite of the our best efforts there is still corruption in our pub public life it's a fact it's a truth but uh, what we desire all of us desire is to fight corruption so that our life is transparent and things become easier uh, there is a lesser there is lesser delay with respect to very many services that are being given to the citizens the citizens deserve a better deal and a corrupt free society definitely will bring a better a satisfaction to the citizens then coming to corruption in public life there are so many issues and problems when the certain issues related to corruption in public life is that there is unnecessary delay as a result of corruption people in uh, certain positions uh, do make a lot of delay in getting things done in order to Uh, get some unfavorable benefits this creates a lot of issues and uh, problems as a result of which uh, the system suffer uh, people suffer and all is the all there is already a lot of delay in the system and that's why uh, the government is trying to address these issues and problems in public life so that the uh, life of the citizens become easier then mainly when we discuss uh, corruption and the, the systems that are built up as a part of the vigilance administration like central vigilance commission state vigilance commission and the various bodies uh, that are uh, brought by the government is to administer a very transparent administrative system and as far as the administrative systems are concerned if you have to eradicate corruption definitely we have to build robust administrative systems and there should be transparency in public trans, uh, tran transactions and as far as public bodies are concerned as far as companies are concerned as far as public sector undertakings are concerned as far as banks are concerned there should be a, the, the companies and all these entities should follow a corporate governance philosophy and the crux of the corporate governance policy is to bring transparency in all the dealings so that what just like the uh, information act the information act in a way is a great attempt on the part of the government to make things transparent so that citizens know what is being done how it is being done and that's why corporate governance in a way is an attempt to bring transparency in public life and if you have to eradicate corruption uh, transparency in transactions are very much required public services are to be made very efficient and if there is lesser corruption or there is no corruption the uh, situation of no corruption will render better public services and as far as the citizen services are concerned we do know that we we have uh, latest technologies we have advanced technologies and by use, by harnessing these user friendly technologies citizen services can be uh, made a little more easier and uh, hurdle free so that citizens uh, sitting in their uh, comfort of their homes can avail these services and for that online uh, all the transactions that are generally uh, availed by the public should be made online so that a person or a citizen uh, sitting in his the comfort of his homes can avail these services and therefore when you uh, talk of digital transformation when we talk of digital india definitely we have to go for more and more digitalization so that all the services all the pub public services are digitalized and in a way made efficient for example let us take the passport seva kendra 
earlier the issue of passport was a very uh, cumbersome task a lot of delay was there in issue of passport but off late we know pretty well as a result of setting up of the passport seva kendras issue of passport has become very very easy and there is absolutely no delay as far as issue of trans, uh, passports are concerned likewise all the public services can be made very very efficient recently i have applied for a renewal of passport it came within some uh, 10 15 days that is the kind of service we uh, desire and that is the kind of service the government is attempting to do and by harnessing technologies we can very well uh, do great things and produce great results that is what we are witnessing right now as a result of information technology revolution very many things that are being done uh, earlier manually are now being done in an automated mode uh, mode automated mode and this automated mode definitely helps citizens and that's what we uh, deserve and that is being done by the government and the government has taken a lot of initiatives in this respect then we have already discussed digital india and as a part of the digital india government as i said government has set up a number of seva kendras uh, all the, for example, let us take in Kerala's case, Akshaya Kendras. Akshaya Kendras do give a lot of uh, services to the citizens. And the national e-governance plan is to, is to uh, promote e-governance. We generally talk of e-government and e-governance. E-government in a way uh, talks of automation of services. And e-governance in a way tries to attempt to build systems and make procedures easy so that the citizens can avail these services in a very easy manner. And as I said, a lot of initiatives are being made by the government in order to bring about a better uh, you know, quality, better quality with respect to various services that are rendered by the uh, government. And the, as far as corruption is concerned, the main issue uh, when we look at corruption is to make citizens aware of the uh, pro problems in public life and the uh, basic role of citizens uh, is to be very very vigilant about corruption and they should uh, giving bribe and taking bribe both are equally a uh, criminal act and that's why one should not give a bribe one should not take bribe and that's why uh, citizens uh, should all, all the more become very sensitive to these things and they should try to abstain from these uh, malpractices. As for government officials, they should equally understand that uh, they should abstain themselves from these corrupt practices so that they, uh, they are able to give better services to the, uh, to the exchequer or the citizens. And as far as the corruption is concerned, we know pretty well that it will not contribute to the national development. Corruption will never contribute to national development. It, you know, corruption will never contribute to public wealth. It may contribute to uh, private wealth, but accumulation of private wealth is not desirable in the sense that if you uh, go on accumulating uh, illegal money, that is a threat for the economy and that affects the economy and that's why corruption is a big issue in our society. In a democratic society, things are to be done in a very straightforward, transparent manner. In uh, most of the advanced countries, if you look at most of the advanced countries, or especially the Western countries or many other countries, we say we see that, or people say, uh, there are so many Indians who are settled in very many different countries like USA, Australia, Canada, and so many other places. They all say that in those, especially European countries, they all say that in those countries, getting public service is very very easy in the sense that you apply and they will give you an allotted time within that allotted time you have to go and get the service if you have to get a certificate a printed certificate they will give you they will allot you a time and in, within that time they will be issuing the certificate and that is possible in India also and that is being done in India also but there are still certain corrupt offices, there are still certain corrupt officials who make a lot of delay in order to uh, get illegal uh, benefits and that itself is a threat to the economy, that itself, itself is a, a threat to the public services and that's why we have to eradicate corruption and in vigilance awareness we, we take a pledge that we will uh, make all out efforts to uh, eradicate corruption in public life and that is very much uh, required in a democratic society 
if uh, benefits are to be equally distributed we talk a lot about equality if benefits are to be equally distributed a corrupt free society will go a long way in giving equal services to all the citizens or else if it is a if there is lot of corruption those who have money they will bribe and get things done and those who do not have money they may not be able to avail services and a lot of uh, inequality is likely to come as a result of this and that's why we have to make all out efforts to eradicate corruption and it is our duty as citizens to uh, make a pledge that we will fight against corruption we will never be a prey to the corrupt practices and we will try and resist all sorts of uh, uh, corrupt practices and we should take a pledge that we will be making all out efforts to uh, fight corruption